What's going on, gamers? I am Merkaba18. We are back, ready for Season 5 in a couple of weeks. Did a ton of PTR testing, gave a lot of feedback, and based on what I saw, I am ready to put out my first build. We're going to start with a Necromancer, as we do every season. It is my personal favorite class. Then we're going to do a Rogue, and then on from there. We're going to do every class again this season. So I'm very excited to see what we can put together for that season. Now, keep in mind, Spearborn is the new class coming in October. Uh, and there is a dev live stream on July 18th, which is in three days. Happens to also be my birthday. So come on by to the stream, say hello. Make sure to hit that follow button right here on TikTok and YouTube. Make sure to check out the live streams and we'll be covering Diablo 4 for the foreseeable future. So this is going to be a Blood Sacrifice Bloodlands build. So let's jump right in and I will talk about everything from gear to talent points to minions and sacrifice bonuses, all that good stuff. So there are a couple of new changes with um, season five, and this is a mostly uniqueless build. There are some weapons that you'll want to change and some uniques that you'll want to as you develop further into the game. But this one was cleaving in the five to seven million range. Um, and doing some somewhere close to 10 million on single target damage bosses uh, per Blood Lance. And the real uh, highlight of this build is how survivable it is. It is off the charts in terms of like, you can just face tank anything in the game. Basically. Um, so let's dive right in. We're going to start with our helmet. We're going to go Aspect of the Might. Now keep in mind, we're also I'm going to link to this build. Many of you requested that last season, so I'm just going to link directly to the build right after this is uploaded. So Aspect of the Might gives you 20% damage reduction with basic skills. Basically, because you're using uh, a basic skill in this build, this is one of the best defensive aspects you can use. Flat out 20% damage reduction. And we're going to go with Mutilator Plate as one of our only uniques in this build. Um, until you get into like Uber uniques and stuff like that, this is the only one that I would really recommend. You are Bloodlance, and when Bloodlance would deal damage to you, it instead fortifies you for 1% of your max health, and there is a 5% chance to form a Blood Orb. The more Blood Orbs in this build that you can form, the better. So getting all those extra orbs is great, and then Bloodlance just deals a flat 20% multiplicative damage because of that item. One of the best Bloodlance items. In We're going to go with Aspect of the Gore Quills. Um, this basically allows you to consume any of the Blood Orbs like I said, spawning them is great. This is going to take all of them and create additional lances, which is where your cleave and AoE damage comes from mostly here. Um, and that is going to also give it a bonus of normal damage uh, for each additional lance deals 20% of the normal damage up to at, at the max roll, uh, prioritizing targets that are not lanced. So this is going to help with some of the other aspects that I talk about in a minute. Uh, I don't have anything equipped on pants here because there's a brand new aspect that almost every Necromancer is probably going to want to use, at least on some level. And we'll talk a lot about that here um, in a minute. First Aura is the new pants unique, or uh, not new, unique, but it's a new aspect. And basically what that does is it creates a circle around you um, that automatically casts um, Iron Maiden and Decrepify. So you're going to have those up at all times. And that is going to, it'll also spread to other areas outside of your little inner circle and do additional, um, it lasts, I think, four seconds after that. Uh, we're going to go Aspect of the uh, Metamorphosis for the Unstoppable and for the chance to inflict with Vampiric Curse. Uh, you get a cooldown increase there, but everything else about it. Unstoppable is critical in a lot of the late game stuff. You want to be able to break that crowd control. For our one-hander, we're going to go Aspect of Hungry Blood. Now, I recommend one-handed sides uh, more than anything until we get into some of the uber uniques and stuff like that. Each cast of Blood Lance will launch an additional one at a nearby enemy when it is first hits an enemy that is already lanced, dealing of X percent of normal damage. So this is also another, like it basically creates a cleave out of the Blood Lance. We're going to go with Blood Seeker's Aspect. We're going to deal additional damage for... Um, each lanced enemy, which is hopefully going to be everybody, up to 25% on your amulet. And then after attacking enemies with a basic skill, it increases the damage of your next core skill by up to X percent to 30%. Gives you a bonus. So you're going to be spamming hemorrhage until your essence is full and then launching as many blood lances as you can. And that's going to boost that damage. 
Uh, whenever your blood skills overpower, you gain attack speed, which is a critical gear, a gear element to this build. That's one of our most important stats. And then we're going to go X increased damage for all the time that you're standing still. You're going to be standing still a lot in this build, especially since Decrepify and Iron Maiden are autocast. And so most everything's going to be pretty close to you and you're going to have a lot of like stuff right in your face. And so most of the time you're not going to be moving around too much. And that just gives you a flat bonus for uh, being able to face tank everything. All right, these are the really important ones. We are going minionless this time. We're going against the green. I think minionless is back a little bit. They have buffed these sacrifice bonuses incredibly high. So your crit strike chance is increased by 10% uh, on the warriors. Your overpower damage is increased by 30%, but you can no longer cast mages. And then this one, you could really go either direction if you wanted to, but we're going to go attack speed here. Uh, to be able to get more blood lances and more hemorrhages off, which then kind of multiplies on itself. You could also make a case for the crit strike damage here. Uh, that's a lot, but you could also make a case for extra health. In most cases here, however, I'm going to say attack speed, uh, unless you're really hurting for max health. So stat prioritization, you're going to talk about like max health, fortify. Uh, you're going to talk about overpower damage is your main, like your main multiplicative of damage, crit strike chance in damage, and then vulnerable to a lesser degree as well. Um, you're going to talk about attack speed. You're going to talk about um, blood lance duration. You're going to obviously want to max out your armor and you want to max out your resistances. Those are going without saying. Uh, attack speed is very important. Um, blood lance uh, tempering and master working. Uh, so that the duration of it lasts longer. You're going to want to uh, decrease the uh, effect or the uh, cooldown on your ultimate. Those are really important. And then speaking of which, we're going to go over to our talent tree. So we're going to go hemorrhage. We're just doing one here because it's really not that big of a bonus for all of the other stuff. Most of our damage comes from blood lance here. Uh, this is mostly to form orbs and to gain some damage reduction. Um, and then you are getting essence and attack speed while healthy there. We are going to come down to five out of five on blood lance, go enhanced, and then supernatural. You can make a case for, for uh, paranormal, but in this particular case, we're gaining attack speed in a lot of other places. So that guaranteed overpower is super awesome and helpful. And it also spawns a blood orb, which is going to be able to then consume it and consume additional blood lances. We're going to go Unliving and Imperfectly Balanced for our first passives. We're going to come down and do one Blood Mist. This is huge. One of the best. I've said this for a year now. I have been on the Blood Mist train for the beginning. Any, Basically, any Necromancer build that isn't using Blood Lance is sacrificing damage reduction, in my opinion. Um, you're, you're going to end up with a lot less survivability because of it. So you go one there. You go to Enhanced. Uh, reduces anything that overpowers is going to reduce the cooldown on it, which is going to be a lot in this build. Um, you're going to gain 10 crit chance uh, for four seconds after it ends as well. So you're you're not only just like surviving, you're gaining some damage, and then you're going to gain some damage after. We're going to go Bone Prison. This is a new addition for me on this build because you're going to basically, uh, what used to happen with Bone Prison is you used to not be able to, like your friends that you're co oping with or yourself, couldn't move in and out of it without being trapped as well. They have changed that. So now you can get in and out of the bone prison without being trapped. And you're gonna go enhanced to make them vulnerable. So this is basically going to trap them all in one place, and then you can blood lance them all into a group much easier. You can make a case for corpse tendrils, especially with the crit strike chance that comes with that, but you gain some of that from down here and you're gonna make stuff vulnerable. Uh, I just think this, this is a new great addition for some survivability, for some damage increase, and it keeps stuff away from you. Uh, Death's Embrace is going to give you close damage reduction um, and increased damage. One of the best abilities in the game still. So you're going to do more damage and take less damage just because they're near, which is going to be almost everything. in the game. Uh, Amplify damage, everything that's cursed, which should be everything given that new passive on or uh, the new um, aspect, you're going to gain increased damage uh, to them. We're going to go with Decrepify here in case you want to spam it or put it in places that it is not currently. This is especially useful uh, in circumstances where you're having to move a little bit more or things aren't as near you. Uh, it's just nice to have that extra ability and you're gaining um, a chance to stun them and you're gaining a chance to reduce your cooldowns because of that as well. We're going to take all of these blood passives, starting with Gruesome Mending. We're going to go Transfusion, Coalesced Blood, 
and Tides of Blood. These are basically all going to heal you for more, give you more blood orbs, and give you increased bonuses from all of those as well. So they kind of stack and multiply. This is where some of the most important passives, in my opinion, come from. Standalone and uh, Memento Memori uh, are going to give you higher levels of sack bonuses, and you're going to take damage reduction because you have no mini. Um, this one's really important because you're going to gain increased crit strike for being healthy. And then we're going to go Rathsma, which is guaranteed overpower. Uh, each time a this timer is reduced each time a blood orb heals or overheals you for the amount greater to you equal of your base life. Bone Storm is probably the best option here. I don't think Blood Wave is any good still. It's uh, it's gotten a little better since launch, but it's still not where I want it to be. And we're also gaining crit strike chance. We're gaining damage reduction. And it's basically going to surround you and do a bunch of stuff, um, a bunch of insane damage. So you're gaining a lot of like passives to things that are already important to you. And you're doing more damage because of that. All right. So here's the big one. This is where we're going to jump in and talk about our Paragon board. So we're going to come over and grab Prime for damage and max health. Um, you could make a case to grab that. I skipped it there. Our first rare glyph is going to be Dominate for the overpower damage. When you overpower the damage, they take more damage from you and your minions. So, win-win. We're going to skip this side and come over to Knowledge. Second Paragon board is going to be Blood Begets Blood. You're going to come over and grab that. Blood Orbs grant more damage, up to 30%. So, anytime you consume them, either from healing or from the Blood Lances, they're going to increase your damage overall. We're going to grab um, Imbiber for the healthy bonus and Potion Healing. We do grab Blood Drinker here for the Blood Orb healing, and we do grab um, damage increase from picking up orbs, which should be pretty natural. We come over to our third board, which is Bloodbath, which is going to grant us 35% increased overpower damage, and that's multiplicative. So huge bonus there. We're going to grab Territorial for damage reduction and damage increase to close targets, which again should be everything. Grab this damage while fortified. And we're going to grab um, damage totals over here and damage while fortified. We're going to grab damage while healthy and overpower damage. And then a little bit of these we can also skip. Healing received, not going to be as important. Super expensive to get to some of these other ones. We're going to come down to our fourth board, which is Sense of Death. Now, these are where the board, like, legendary nodes become less important. We are going to pick this one up because anytime there's corpses nearby, you're going to gain damage reduction. If there are no corpses, you're going to gain damage increase. So that's a, like, uh, almost every time you're in a fight, in some way you're gaining a benefit, whether it's damage increase or damage reduction. We're not really generating a lot of or consuming a lot of corpses, but it's just a nice little flat bonus. You could make the case to skip that if you wanted to. Uh, and we are going to grab damage to injured in these nodes here. Come down to our next glyph, which is undaunted. Damage increase while fortified. And you gain an additional 10% reduction while you are fortified. Uh, you're starting to see maybe why some of the <laughs> damage reduction on this build is some of the best in the game. You're, you're just going to face tank everything. Uh, you're going to gain some damage to injured there. We'll skip the rest of the nodes. Come over to our next Fifth, I think fifth board, which is Flesh Eater. This is the first one where we're going to skip the legendary node because we're not consuming corpses. That's a nice bonus to get if you can help it, but we're not consuming corpses with this one. Um, and we're going to gain a bunch of damage from Vulnerable with Exploit. So we're also going to then make people more... Uh, everything that's in Bone Prison is going to make it vulnerable for a couple of seconds, but this is just an extra layer of vulnerability and you're going to gain some bonus to vulnerable damage there. Uh, we're going to grab the last and final glyph on Essence, which is going to grant us crit strike damage and crit strike damage to healthy or to non-healthy. Uh, we're going to grab all of these resistances just to kind of fill out some of the board, and that is going to close it out. So essentially, the point of this entire build is to be as healthy as possible, to do more damage because you're healthy, and then to guarantee some overpowers. So your top multiplicative damage bonus is going to be to healthy and to open. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this guide. I will, again, like I said, link these down below so that you have access to them. And let me know in the comments if you have any questions. I hope to see you on the live stream for the Spiritborn reveal this week. And I hope to see you for my birthday on Thursday as well. Look forward to season five and see you again for the next build.